Hey everyone out there in internet land, it's Regular Jim again, coming at you with another action figure centric video. Uh, last time I reviewed the Marvel Legends Morph figure. Uh, this time I thought I would just showcase all of the action figures I have bought over the last month. Uh, see, about a month ago, I uh, happened to be at a Target and I found an action figure I really liked. Now, before that, I had never really been a fan of action figures. I mean, I liked action figures. You know, I've, uh, you know, when I was a kid, I had a lot of them, of course. And, you know, as an adult, I appreciated them. But they were always kind of expensive, in my opinion, uh, for what you got. And I was, and I was never much for knickknacks. Um, but as I've had a lot of time on my hands and a few extra bucks in my pocket, uh, I, and I found this one particular figure that I really 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 liked uh i decided to jump in just jump in and see what see what i could find um i've got some rules when i collect action figures there it, it's a little bit loose but the rules are basically i only collect characters i like uh, i try to keep them in the six to seven inch range uh, size wise and they got to be like source accurate i do not care for like super deformed uh, like your Funko Pop figular figures or the like. Uh, I very much prefer the on-model, this is what they look like uh, style of figures. So that's what I'm focusing on primarily. Um, now this does create some issues where, you know, you just can't find the figures you want because either they don't exist, which it happens more often than I'd hoped, than I thought, uh, than I'd hoped, and sometimes you get into the hobby in 2020 and it turns out the figure you figure you wanted uh came out five or ten years ago and is now a 60 dollars figure on ebay and that's the only way you're ever going to get it so i can see how the hobby is a little bit expensive uh, but i'm enjoying it as you can see i have a lot more than one figure now now i'm sure a lot of collectors out there have a ton more than i do but uh, these are basically all the figures I've purchased in the last four weeks. Uh, now, before I started collecting uh, action figures this year, I owned exactly one action figure. And that figure was this Savage Dragon 10th Anniversary McFarlane Toys uh, figure back in 2003 I think or 2002 or 2003 Image Comics was celebrating its uh, 10 year anniversary and as part of that McFarlane Toys put out um, I believe four figures representing the f the four founders who were still at Image at the time I believe uh, Ripclaw, Shadowhawk, Spawn and Savage Dragon all got figures uh, this is one of only I believe three Savage Dragon style figures that has ever been produced. Uh, Savage Dragon is one of my favorite superheroes, one of my favorite comic book series of all time. Uh, this is one of the better looking ones in terms of uh, what he looks like the character from the comic. He's got the right, you know, dimensions. He's got broad shoulders. He's got an excellent, excellent looking fin. Uh, perfect five segment fin, 90 degree angle. Among Savage, Dra Among Savage Dragon fans, accurate fins are very important to us, and this figure has it. Um, problem is, this is back in like the older days of McFarlane Toys, where they were going very much more for uh, accuracy over uh, articulation. So this poor guy only has uh, shoulder joints that go up and down. This one's a little tight because I don't move it very often. His head turns left and right. His fists kind of turn around in a circle, but otherwise he can only basically stand in this pose. It's super stiff. He has no articulation in the knees, none in the feet, none, none, and especially none here in the uh, elbows. He's very cool. He does have this. Tor he does have this torso joint which barely moves, and in, in another hip joint where he can move a lot more. He basically can just stand in this one particular pose. He's got this kind of a cool base that helps him stand up, but otherwise he is basically in this pose forever. He's a, as an action figure, he's kind of terrible, but as a uh, 
you know, kind of a statue, he's pretty good. Uh, I did always like this figure, and because I bought this figure more because I'm a Savage Dragon fan, more than more than an action figure fan, which is why he has been the only figure I've owned in the last 20 years. So that 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 explains my that that it that is my action figure history. Uh, dang it, dragon here. Um, but so what spurred me to actually get into getting action figures was I was in a Target. And by sheer sheer happenstance, I found oops, I found this guy. Now, this is Saitama. He is the uh, protagonist of the manga comic One Punch Man. Saitama is the most powerful being in his universe. He defeats all of his enemies with a single punch. Uh, he's very unassuming. You know, he's not super muscular. He's very skinny. Uh, bald. Those are his defining features as a character. This figure is a perfect representation of what Saitama looks like in the comics. I was shocked when I found this. Uh, as this is a McFarlane Toys figure. Um... I had not, because I did, never paid attention to action figures, I had not realized that McFarlane had gotten into doing anime, um, manga and anime figures. And I gotta say, this is the only One Punch Man figure they've made so far, but it is crazy detailed. It is very accurate. And as I said on the Savage Dragon figure, back, back, in, the er, back in the old days, their articulation left a lot to be desired. But I gotta say, they must have come a long way because this guy has all kinds of articulation he's got he's got double jointed wrists uh i mean elbows so that he can make basically make his you know make his arm like flush with itself so it gives you a lot of extra movement there his arm will swing all the way around 360 degrees it'll pop all the way out like that it's got another swivel here uh his knees and elbows his legs, let me get this stand off. The stands are, the, these stands are nice. All the McFarlane toys come with stands like this, which are super useful for helping stand stuff up. Because um, even though it is well articulated, it does have some issues with standing on its own just for balance reasons. Although I guess I got it in a pretty good position right now. But uh, his legs are a little stiff. Um, for whatever reason, these hip joints kind of bang into it themselves so they don't want to they don't want to they don't want to go they don't want to go front and back but they do pop out left and right well they pop out to the side pretty well and again you got those double jointed knees so if you really want to oops, the cape's getting in the way you can get it really close like that so you can get some really good poses like that and of course on the foot here he's actually got he's got actually got articulated toes so you can do a little bit more with the uh, with the uh, again you know, with foot poses. He's got a ball joint on his foot, so you can rotate his foot all the way around. A lot of movement there. He's just such a great figure. And he's oh, and I really like his cape. It is plastic. It is rubber, but it's like the material is like a very fine, very light rubber. So it flips, it flops a lot more than other capes that I've come across so far. It's it's very soft. You, you can't really pose it. It's got its own, it's got its own uh you know, it's got its own cape design, kind of hard, hard in. But uh I really like its looseness. It just it feels more like a real cape. Uh, but I really like this figure a lot, and this is the guy who spurred me into buying action figures. Because I, I put him up with drag, I put him next to Dragon, and I said, oh, these guys look lonely. And I said, all right, we're going to buy some more. Get him some friends. So, the very next figure I bought uh, was All Might. All Might is from the uh, manga and anime My Hero Academia. He is the premier superhero of that universe. Um, he's a mentor figure to the main character of the story. 
Uh, this is another McFarlane Toys. Uh, I did see him when I bought the Saitama figure, uh, but I did not buy him that day as I was still doing, and I wasn't sure I was getting into this, and also I wanted to do a bunch of research. He's another case where McFarlane really goes ham on, on accuracy. He looks like All Might. This is what All Might looks like. Tiny head, big body. This is, uh, this is, this is, this is what he looks like. Now, real All Might is about a head taller uh, by scale than this guy. In fact, my biggest issue with him is that Saitama is actually almost taller than him. And Saitama, Saitama uh, should actually be a, a shorter character because he's so unintimidating. But these are, these are seven inch figures, but they are not to scale. So he is seven inches tall, but he's not to scale to what he would be in, you know, quote unquote real life, uh, which does mean the character who should be bigger than him uh, is about the same height when he should be taller. Not a huge deal, to be completely honest. I, like I said, I primarily go into this for, for uh, uh, design accuracy, and this is one of the better ones, or one of the best ones, to be completely honest. Uh, he does, you know, he's got the same similar modern McFarlane toys articulation. Uh, he's got these, uh, he got the double jointed knees, the double jointed elbows. His head does turns quite a bit, goes down. His hair kind of stops it from going up, but you know it is what that is. You know, and this guy he came with um he came with uh different fist options. These fists come off and can be replaced, and. Uh, So, uh, yeah, he's got a few accessories that I have put away. Um, he's really good for posing. He's a little top-heavy, so he's a little tough to, like, get into position. I've got him in, like, this battle stance, which I kind of dig. Uh, but, yeah, he's a, he was a cool one. He was one. He was the first one I bought after I bought, uh, after I decided I wanted more figures. I bought him at a Best Buy for $20. Uh, he's very cool. I'm actually, I'm really liking the McFarlane toy stuff. They're very, they're very good. The next figure I bought was Mario. Super Mario from the video games. This is a little cheap $10 figure I bought at GameStop. Um, I bought him primarily because I'm a big video game fan and I love Mario. Uh, this is a pretty basic action figure. He's I, I, I got him primarily because he is roughly in scale with the six inch figures. Uh, in theory, Mario would come up to be a, about your hip. So, uh, you know. Come back. You know, so he's not, he's not human size. So, you know, he, he reasonably makes sense to be among these characters at this scale. Um, this, again, is by Jack's, uh, Jack's Pacific. Um, their toys are, to be completely honest, they're not great. They're pretty cheaply made. Uh, all, their, all of this guy's joints feel kind of loose. I'm afraid if I pose him too much, he'll stop being able to hold position. So I try not to play with him too much. There's a much nicer Mario figure that I've seen online with a lot more uh, articulation that costs about $30. I'm considering replacing with that, but I've got to do some re more research on that, try to find a good price. Um, but otherwise, it's, you know, it's what I like. It's to scale. It's on model. It's Mario. Um, yeah, I, like I said, the Mario was part of, uh, from Jack Pacific and is part of the world of Nintendo line. They have a whole bunch of different Nintendo characters, uh, similar size and build quality. So I don't think I'm going to buy any others because again, I'm being very specific about what I get. Uh, but this Mario is pretty good. Uh, then the next figure I got, ah, uh, yes, ah, uh, this is the last of my McFarlane figures. Uh, this is uh, Midoriya. Midoriya is the main character of My Hero Academia. Uh, he is he is the inheritor of All Might's power. He's a student. Uh, he's very cool. I like him as a character. He's very uh, he's very uh, he thinks a lot about. Uh, he's very strategic, and he's very powerful, and he's really he's just a fun series. And th again, this is a very good on model. Um, McFarlane Toys figure. Uh, again, he's a child. He should probably be about a head shorter than he is, but again, McFarlane goes for 
you know, maximum size, mac maximum accuracy. So when you put him up against, actually, when you put him up against his mentor, All Might here, he's only about a head shorter than him when he really should be up to maybe his chest. So the scale isn't great, but the but the detail is insane. Um, I'm not, I got him in a pose early late, so I'm not going to mess with him too much. I got him with these bent knees, but again... He's got the modern McFarlane stuff with the double jointed knees, the double jointed elbows. Just a lot of motion, a lot of posing possibilities. I really dig it for that reason almost exclusively. So after that, I kind of went a little crazy on eBay. Uh, I wound up buying a lot of uh, just... I went looking for characters I liked, and whatever I could find for a decent price, generally under, under $20... Uh, I, I got. So the very next figure I got was this guy. Let's see if I can get him in camera. He's a little tall. Uh, this is Kevin Matchstick. He's the main character of the uh, Image Independent Series Mage. Uh, he's kind of, he's the um, reincarnation of King Arthur. He battles supernatural enemies. Uh, he's a he's just a regular guy thrown into a very uh, a, comp, a very um, mystical situation he just does not really have he never really wanted to deal with but he he does it anyway because he's a hero as you can see he dresses in just a t-shirt uh cargo pants he's a he's a he's, he's got a unique look he's got a, he's got a thunderbolt very classic very captain marvel uh he's a mage is one of those comics that it, people who enjoy comics should read um this particular figure i cannot remember who actually made it off the top of my head but when I ordered it, I did not realize how large it was. I, never in a million years did I expect this guy, this random, obscure comic book character, to be the largest figure I bought. Um, to be completely honest, I feel he's, like, too big. He doesn't really... He's, he, he looks great. Again, he's, he's very in scale. I mean, he's very accurate to his comic design. Um, he's also got this glowing baseball bat. A little bent, this one, but you know what? Who cares? Um, but he's huge. He towers over everybody else when as a, you know, as a fate, as a character, he should be about normal human size. Uh, so again, this is a great figure just from a, from a presentation standpoint, not so much a scale standpoint. So that, while, while that was slightly disappointing again, because of how good it looks, I, uh, I don't mind too much. Now, um, his articulation is a little bit rougher. He's got a lot of like single joints, so he doesn't have a lot of movement in the arms. He has some uh, twisting in the elbow, uh, so he can do a few things. Also, he f ever since I started posing him, his uh, joints have loosened up a lot. So I'll put his arm up, and over time, gravity will pull it back down. So that's not great. Just because of how, how heavy the plastic is, I think, is what's causing the problem. Uh, again, he's got the single single joint knees, which are which limits articulation. His feet are fused to his legs, so there's like no motion there. His hip, you know, very limited rotation. Goes out to the side pretty well, though. Kicks up and down okay. Uh, he twists in the torso. His head only goes left and right. So he's a big figure, a lot of detail, but lacks in the articulation department. But uh, his comic accuracy, I really dig. Alright, so after Kevin, I got some other stuff off eBay. Actually, no. We'll talk about Scrooge McDuck. Um, Scrooge McDuck is a character I really like. I uh, watched DuckTales growing up, of course. Um, but recently, I've been getting into the uh, Uncle Scrooge comic books. And Uncle Scrooge has become one of my favorite comic characters of all time. Now, unfortunately, there is no Uncle Scrooge figure uh, that is comic perfect accurate. This particular figure uh, was produced by uh, Fat Mojo. Uh, came out uh, a couple years ago. I believe it was a Target exclusive, although I got lucky and found it at a comic shop for a good price. Um, this is from the 2017 DuckTales uh, uh, revival TV show. Um, however, he is pretty much comic accurate, so he doubles as the TV show figure, and I just consider him the comic figure uh he's pretty much scrooge mcduck uh his articulation is very limited his shoulders go up and down and that's it his legs don't even move to be honest he's been having trouble standing up because he he's at because his uh 
back end here is kind of back, he uh, back heavy, so he always keeps wanting to fall backwards. Uh, I don't really like that. Uh, the, I, as I've been, as I've had him, I noticed that he's had some uh, paint problems. Like here on his foot, you can see the uh, the black uh, rubber showing through the paint. And there's a few other places on him, like here on his hat, that have kind of taken some dings. Uh, again, I found him at a local comic shop. Apparently, some, someone who had collected uh, the DuckTales figures sold their collection. And I got to reap the benefits of getting the figure I wanted because uh, I paid only like $12 for this, where currently it goes for like 30 on the internet, on eBay. It's crazy. Um, but uh, I like this one. Lack of articulation, eh. But he's in scale with Mario, and I figure these two characters that if they were hanging out with real people, you know, they'd be about this size. So again, scale, accuracy, it's everything I want in a figure. See, yeah, his, his, and you know, I think he's more his top hat that makes him top heavy. Eh. All right, so after Scrooge, I got, ah, yes, Mary Marvel. Now, this is a DC Classics made by Mattel. Uh, the DC figures I've been finding are, in particular this one, she's very lightweight. Her legs are really, like, loose, rubbery. So they keep, like, like you put them in position, and, like, over time they, like, stretch back into out of, out of position, and then she falls over. So it's, it's becoming an issue with keeping her pose the way I want for an extended period of time. Uh, her joints are all kind of eh. They're actually really visible. Like, you can see all of her joints, which uh, isn't the greatest. Um, I guess it's just kind of because it's flesh tone, it just shows up more. Uh, her cape's pretty cool. It's kind of a harder plastic, so it's, like, really fixed to its... Uh, it always looks like it's blowing in the wind, which is okay. You know, it's very Marvel. She flies, she's strong. She's one of my favorite DC characters. I like her more than than her brother, Captain Marvel, to be completely honest. I just like I just like like her the character. Um, again, she has pretty limited pose possibilities because her, her legs are so loose. Also her cape makes her a bit top heavy, so she's a little tough to find, you know, really classic poses. So I put her in this one armed on her hip and ready to go look. Uh, the DC, the Mattel figures for, for DC, I just find are a little bit shoddier build quality wise um, than the Marvel ones at Hasbro we're going to talk about soon. But otherwise, she's a pretty good figure. She's she's on model. Damn it. All right, apologies. Um, so yeah, that's Mary Marvel. Next up, oh yes. Um, these Doctor Who figures. I bought these on Overstock.com because they were uh, cheaper than I could find anywhere else at the time. Uh, when I bought these, the uh, the listing said they were six-inch action figures. Much to my shock, when they arrived, that boy ain't more uh, ain't a hair over five. Um, the second Doctor, Patrick, played by Patrick Troughton in Doctor Who. Uh, is one of my favorite uh, doctors of Doctor Who, and so I thought, yeah, I gotta have a, I gotta have a Patrick Troughton figure, absolutely. Uh, this one was in a two pack, came with a Dalek, which is kind of nice to have, just as a visual reference, uh, as a evil, evil space alien with a plunger for a hand. Uh, this figure is incredibly poorly articulate. His arms go up and down. He's got a little bit of swing to the left and right. Uh, his knees are very stiff. His coat here prevents all, there's no side to side movement. His uh, posing possibilities are very limited. And he came with uh, almost no, uh, almost no, uh, he came with no accessories at all. Uh, he looks he, he looks good as like a reference. That That is, that is Patrick Troughton's face, absolutely. Looks great in that regard. Terrible action figure. Uh, this is the only pose he will ever hold. Uh, next up, we got Super Patriot. 
Super Patriot is a is a character, uh, a supporting character from Savage Dragon. This, this particular figure was produced by Toy Biz in the early 2000s as part of their comic book, uh, comic book legends line, where they did a bunch of independent characters, including Savage Dragon. Um, I'd been I when I first started collecting these figures a month ago, uh, he was at the top of my list because he is a great figure from just a, uh, a sculpt standpoint he's very on model this is what super patriot looks like uh because it was an older line of toys that had been out of print for years i was finding it hard to find it for a good price um most of them were in the 30s i saw a few in the 40s uh that those were all new and sealed though uh so i just kind of kept putting off buying him until one day i went to my local toy store the toy vault uh, here in my my neck of the woods and was going through their loose figures. They all they have a bunch of loose figures that are all bagged up uh, A few of these figures came from that, but I was shocked shocked to find this guy for ten dollars Loose when in the same store. He was new for 30 uh, He's great design wise. He is very on model He's got all he's got his shoulder pads. He's got his you know really cool painted mask uh, this arm with the gun is just a gun arm. I kind of wish it had a replaceable bit and wasn't permanently a gun, uh, but it is what it is. His articulation is pretty good. He's got double joints in the arms and the legs. Uh, this is this was a used figure, so his joints are a little loose from use. Uh, one thing I'm finding is that his legs have a tendency to slip, so I'm always struggling to keep him standing. Uh, he always wants to fall over. The gun makes him rather top-heavy. Uh, so you have to play with them a lot to get them in a position you want. But again, he's very well designed. His back sculpt's got lots of lots of muscles in there. Uh, his legs have got all these rivets and lines, and he's just kind of cool. I just always loved his design. So as an action figure, he works out really good. Um, then we got yes, we'll do. This is. Marvel Comics' Black Knight through the, through through Hasbro's Marvel Legends line. Black Knight is a superhero. He's an Avenger. Uh, his whole deal is his sword curses him. Um, that it, The sword wants him to kill, but he chooses to be a hero instead. This figure came out a couple of years ago. It's one of the two Black Knight figures. In, in my opinion, it is the best one. Now, it's not the Black Knight's best look, in my opinion. His... In my opinion, the 90s look where he was basically a guy in a t-shirt and jeans and a leather jacket wearing the same helmet is the best look. But I pickers can't be choosers when it comes to Black Knight. He's just not popular enough. Uh, and this one is in his full battle getup. Looks great. Looks great. Uh, the figure itself comes with a sword, which... Uh... Oh, come on, Spangler. Spangler's been being a bit of a problem all right so yeah black knight comes with a sword he's got a couple of different heads this is my preferred helmet it's very slick no fuss no muss his other ones are a little bit more ornate uh he's got a cape that actually is detachable which is kind of cool uh just kind of pops off his neck there don't even have to do anything of course now he's unbalanced because uh i guess his po the pose i had him in was cape required all right so yeah he's he, he's just design wise i just i just dig it a lot a lot these these hasbro marvel legends figures are pretty good in my opinion they're all pretty good sculpt wise they look good they they got good uh the joints are all pretty uh good for posing just just in general i'm liking all these marvel legends figures i just wish they had a few more of these kind of like b-list characters that i'm into they're they're a lot. They have a lot of characters, but some of the ones that are more obscure are harder. That just don't exist in toy form. Uh, next, we got another DC Classics uh, DC Classics Mattel figure. This is Jack Knight. He's the Star Man. He's from DC Comics. Uh, he he was a character in a very well liked '90s series. His um, his, fa his father was a Golden Age character back in the 40s, uh, he, the Golden Age Starman, where Jack Knight did not really want to follow in his father's footsteps, but had the legacy thrust upon him. He's another really cool character who, where, 
wears pretty much normal clothes. You know, he's got green shirt, uh, slacks, this really cool jacket, um, goggles, and of course his uh, uh, cosmic rod, which uh, lets him fly, shoot beams, you know, do the Starman stuff. Uh, this figure is really good uh, in terms of sculpt. It looks great. Looks just like the character. Um, like the other DC, DC, uh, le uh, sorry, like the other Mattel figures, it's a little bit stiffer in the articulation area. Very basic. Like his legs are only, his legs are only single jointed. Jointed. His arm is only single jointed. Uh, but he's got, you know, he's got some posing possibilities. In general, he just looks good standing up. Uh, I like his staff, of course, because that's what defines him. Uh, it's got his little, little goatee there. Just like the real thing. All right. Um, ah, yes. This is Superwoman, uh, another Mattel DC figure. Uh, Superwoman is the evil counterpart of Wonder Woman from Earth 3. Uh, she is actually the evil Lois Lane of that universe. Uh, where the universe where all the heroes are bad guys. Uh, I just like the design of this figure. This is her new 52 redesign, which is pretty close to which is pretty close to her um, previous design, her previous modern age design. Um, she's got this really neat kind of like shoulder cape thing that is a separate piece. It kind of moves. You can move it around, give it, you know, position it the way you want. Uh, she's got. She's got double jointed legs, uh, single jointed arms. You know, she's got you know some movement in the arms, go up and down. Her torso moves around here. Doesn't have any waist uh, articulation, so she can't really twist at the waist. I kind of put her in this little back step sort of like pose. I got to play with the, around with it some more. I, I I've been finding I enjoy like make, moving the legs in these weird positions so they aren't just all standing straight. So I've uh, been playing around with different stuff like that. And um, next we got Egon Spangler. Hasbro this year started a brand new line of uh, six inch Ghostbusters figures based on the movie. Uh, Dr. Spangler is my favorite character from Ghostbusters. So when I saw this at the store, I had to have it. Don't fall over. It's got basically the same build quality as any Marvel Legends figure. It's got the uh, the double jointed legs, the double jointed arms. Uh, head goes up and down, left and right. Arms uh, arms go up and down a little bit. Uh, but of course, the coolest part about him is the all of his accessories. He of course comes with this proton pack, which is removable, but I will never take it off. Uh, this uh, proton gun comes off, so you can put him into a you know into a stance that where he's holding it, holding the proton pack, uh, proton gun. I choose not to. I kind of prefer him to have his little uh, EKG reader here. Um, just just a great, great on model figure. It's exactly what I'm looking for in in like movie figures, uh, as well as other you know superhero character figures. Just, I'm glad I found this. I won't buy any more of the Ghostbusters figures because as, as cool as they are, I don't need more than one. And this one is absolutely my favorite. And of course, uh, saw this in my rev previous review video. This is Blink. Uh, this is her, uh, this is her Exiles design, not her Age of Apocalypse design. Um, she's got some, you know, she's got, she's another Marvel Legends Hasbro figure. She's got, you know, pretty good articulation. She's got, she's got, Double jointed legs, single jointed arms, which actually I'm just noticing the single jointed arms. I kind of thought they were double. I guess that explains why she's not as flexible as some of the other figures. Um, you can do it. She's, she's small enough and light enough that you can do some pretty cool poses. She's got a pretty basic body build, so she, uh, you know, she's good for a bunch of different things. Um, I think a common complaint amongst uh, the, the the Marvel Legends collectors is that the female bodies are not quite as articulated as the as the male ones, which I have noticed. Uh, but she's very on model. She looks just like she's supposed to, and she poses pretty well. She does the stuff you want her to do as an action figure. I like it. I like it a lot. And then we also got Beta Ray Bill. 
Beta Ray Bill is an alien who has the power of Thor, and he is very much cooler than Thor because he has a really cool horse head. Also, he's got a big old mallet with an axe called Stormbringer. Uh, not much to say about this guy, although he is much bigger than the other Marvel Legends figures that I previously had bought, so it's kind of cool to have a figure that stands about a head taller than everybody else and also is a bit wider than everybody else. So he's, um, you know, he's a beefier character. I don't want to mess with the pose too much because it's kind of a pain to get him in the way I want. But uh, as you can see, he's got this big, big, big plastic rubber cape, which kind of like the morph figure over here um, is just kind of a big chunk of plastic, which takes up, oop, that takes up a lot of space, which al but also helps you pose him a bit better because you can always like put the weight on the cape. And so you can kind of do more th interesting things with poses that you normally wouldn't be able to get away with. Um, but he's cool just because he comes with his, uh, his hammer. Uh, and of course, he, he's actually got extra, an extra part of articulation that other figures don't have. His mouth opens and closes. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> but yeah, um, he's cooler than Thor. So he'll probably be the only Thor-like figure I buy, to, if, I'm complete, if I'm completely honest. Uh, just look at him. Look at his big, dumb horse face. Rawr. And then finally, of course, we have Morph who I talked about in my review video previously, which I won't go super in-depth on here. This was the most recent figure that I bought. I bought it uh, uh, yes yesterday, and uh, I did the unboxing for it yesterday, and I gotta say, I still really, really like this figure. He's got, uh, he's a very basic body, but, you know, his paint job's really good, and he's on, you know, on point, on model. So, yeah, these are... All the action figures that I purchased over the last month. Um, I got two more in the mail right now, which I'll be doing unboxing videos for when I receive them. And uh, uh, I don't know what other ones I'm planning to buy, although I have decided to take a break uh, for the next couple, you know, probably for the next couple weeks while I, you know, recharge my batteries, decide if I'm going to keep doing, keep buying these, keep making these videos. Uh, we'll see. But uh, it's been fun uh, buying action figures. If you got room for them, and you're a fan of the characters, uh, can be very. Uh, I found I I have found it very re rewarding in the last you know couple of weeks just to you know keep me occupied and also as someone who likes to draw sometimes it's good to have sometimes just to have uh, uh, models for the things you might want to draw. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, again, I hope to have more videos like this in the near future. Uh, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel if you wish. I don't know how often I'll do videos like this, but hopefully, you know, sometimes. I also sometimes do uh, recordings of other things like uh, adventure games, PC games that I play. Uh, but otherwise, it's just this. So, thanks for watching.